Hi guys, Will Terry, children's book illustrator, and I'm just making a little video tutorial on the temperature of color today. Um, and so you can get more videos at my blog or my website. Just go to willterry.blogspot.com. Oops. And um, this this uh, video was actually requested from me from a couple of different people. Uh, one was Jamie, and um, anyway, so in in my uh, digital painting and Photoshop tutorial, I talk about color temperature a lot, but I didn't explain it very well. So I'm going to just make this little video. I'm just going to put this on YouTube, and if anybody ever asks me in the future, I'm just going to send it to them. So there you go. Okay, so just delete this here, and okay. So what I have right here is um, a little color wheel that I made. Now I, I wanted to make that because I wanted to explain this the color picker in Photoshop a little bit better. This this color picker right here is a bar, um, and you know you can slide through the colors right here. Now this is the same if you're painting too, so it doesn't matter. And then you can choose colors anywhere in here and this is white up here we'll talk about that in a little bit but I wanted to make this color wheel because this is actually how the colors fit together and on this color wheel right here this red right here is the same as this red down here and so if the if we loop these together and made a wheel right here we'd have the same thing as we have right here so I just made one just for the sake of um, this video but I want to talk about warm and cool colors a little bit so I'm just going to zoom in on this for a second and kind of rotate this a little bit get a brush and then I'm just going to draw in here real light um, right about oh I'm just going to cut this wheel in half right about there and up here these we're going to call the warm colors okay and then down here these are going to be our cool colors so you know, and, and you can see that I've got a little bit of yellow. Now, remember that the temperature is always relative. So, even though um, this half of the color wheel up here is typically, we call those the warm colors, and we typically call the purples and the blues and the greens the cool colors. Um, you know, if you looked at green right here, uh, green might be cooler than yellow. But green is warmer than blue. So even in the cool colors, you know, you have temper, temperature variances. One thing to keep in mind is that blue is the coldest color and orange is the hottest color. And if you think about the sun or you think about, you know, if you were coloring um, the light from a candle, you know, that orange, orangey yellow glow. That's why we call these warm colors. And if you think of night, if you think of cold, wintry, snowy scenes, you think more blues and purples. Uh, on overcast day, you definitely don't think of as being warm. You don't think of as being orange. You probably think of being gray. And we're going to talk about how grays fit into uh, warm and cool colors as well. So hopefully we'll be able to show you enough things in this little video to where it'll help you in your painting. Okay. I have a little painting that I did here in Photoshop, and I'm going to use this as well um, for some of the stuff that I want to talk about. So the first thing we can do is let's let's um, let's look at the picker here. I call this the picker for Photoshop. And um, what, one thing that we'll notice is that up here in this corner, this is pure white. Down here in this corner, this is this is pure black. Over here is a mixture of this red, this saturated red, and black to form this color right here. And then um, this is the pure saturated, pure hue. So that's what we're getting um, when we pick through here. These, This kind of gives us the family of colors, okay? So just by sliding this along, um, if, I've, if I'm on the orange family right there, if I go towards yellow, I'm actually going cooler. If I go back to orange and I go towards red, I'm going cooler. Because remember, orange right here is, and let me just zoom in. Oops. Let's make sure we can see that good. 
just remember that orange is the hottest color. So anything moving away from orange is going to be going cooler. So all these colors are cooler than orange. Okay, so it's all relative to that. So let's just do this. Let's take um, a color here and just talk about a few things. So if I select this purple color right in here, and we'll see what this looks like right here. So that's kind of a mauve kind of a color, okay? And then if I go into the color family by going to the picker there, I can see that this is made up of, um, you know, it's made up of some black or some gray, because this, this white right here is mixed with black and everything in between. So it's basically taking some of this gray, some of this purple, and some white, and we're coming up with that color right there. But if I move this slider right here, now if I move it, because we're purple, if I move it towards red, I'm going towards the warmth. So if I'm at purple right here and I move towards red, I'm going warmer. So right now, that color, if I don't do anything else except select that, this color right here is warmer. Okay? And if I go back in there again, and I hope these subtleties come across on your monitor. So that's why I'm going to do more than, than one. As I move up here, it should keep going warmer and warmer and warmer. And you should you should kind of be able to feel that. I'm not moving the color right here. I'm just changing the color family to a warmer family. And you should be able to see that this is just slowly getting warmer and warmer. Now it's grayed out because it's got black in it and it's got white. So it's not saturated color, right? Now if I did the same thing, um, starting in the purple, but I was more saturated, it would be more pronounced, right? So if I start here and get really saturated, and then we move more towards red and put some of that in there, you can see it's warming up. Okay, so we're going to move up here. And I'm going to keep going towards orange. That's about as warm as that can get right there. Um, it might be able to go just a little bit more. Yep. And that's about as hot as, as that can get. Now, it can get a little hotter if we go more saturated. but not much. Um, so in, in the video I talked about warming or cooling down the face and one of the things that where this will come into play where warm and cool colors will you'll see them a lot is on people's faces. Um, and typically there are certain areas of the face that are warmer and certain areas that are cooler. Um, around the eyes you'll find that um, the, the, there are fewer blood vessels right in the, in the areas right around the eyes. And so those, temp, those um, tones in the face tend to be cooler. Okay, so if we look at the color wheel, if, if this kid that I've painted is mostly kind of an orangey, peachy color, kind of color, then definitely when you get around the eyes, you're going to want to move more into the cooler colors, maybe even some greens that you can hide in there and especially down around the mouth uh, we have fewer blood vessels around our mouth than we do in our cheeks. Our cheeks have a lot of blood vessels and capillaries that move towards the surface as does our nose so you want to move towards the warmer colors more oranges and reds um, and so you can see that in the face here so let, let's just select some of these colors and kind of play with that a little bit so let's say I take this color right here, this kind of somewhat peachy saturated color. Let's see where, let's see where that is in the color picker. So it's in the red family right here. Not purely saturated. We've added white to it and hardly any black. So it's mostly uh, what we call tinting out. Whenever you add white to something, you're tinting. So it's the pure saturated color, and it's more saturated than it is tint. So if it were right here, it would be equal parts white and and the saturated color. But it was more over here, so it's 
it's got more color into it. Well, what if we want to cool that down? There's a lot of things we can do to cool down this color. And, and sometimes it, what happens is it, it has to feel right. So again, we can cool it down by just moving this slider away from orange, which in this case, it's not a circle, so it's going to stop right there. But it picks up again over here. So we can move it away from orange. Now remember, that will cool it down, right? So this color right here, even though it's, it's pink, it's on its way. If we look at these right here, remember, it's, it's, it's not cold, but relative to the orange, it is slightly cooler, and it's going in that cooler direction because, remember, if we keep sliding that slider down, it will eventually really cool down until it's blue. So it's, it's cooling it down a little bit. Another way to cool that color down, though, is to add basically anything else. So if we want to stay in this family of color, we can move it more towards white, which will cool it down even more. So that color right there is further away from the saturated orange, and it's very subtle, and on your screen you might not be able to see it that well, so I'll, I'll take it a little further. Okay, this is also cooling it down. And then the closer we get to white, white is a cool color as well, or it's not really a color, but it does cool things. It is definitely, white is not hot. You think of white hot, but that's definitely cooling that color down. So that's another way to do it. Another way to cool it down is to add black. So if we're back at this color again, and we start going um, from here, uh, well, we could go straight down or we could go down towards black. It doesn't matter. Any direction that we go, and I'll just take this out this other direction here. And you can you can do this on your own. You can just kind of play with this and see and experiment. Um, and another thing that I like to do to figure out how people are using color is just to take their image into Photoshop and, and use the color picker. I used to do that a lot. But this is cooling down this color too because, again, it's moving away from orange. So... You know, another another uh, way to, to substitute, um, if you hear somebody say, well, you should cool down that color, or it would look good if that color were cooled down, is um, anytime it's moving away from orange. Now, so remember, if this is orange, right up in, in this corner right here, anything, any change you make to that right there is going to cool it down with when you're dealing with orange. Now let's talk about blue, because blue is a cool color. So how can we warm or cool blue? Can we warm and cool blue? Let's look at this for a second. Okay. Um, if, let's see, here's, this is, this blue right here is actually probably the coldest. So there's not really anything you can do to this um, to make it any cooler because that is the coldest color so adding white to this will actually warm it up <laughs> it's kind of the opposite it is that is less cold than the blue so this kind of works in reverse and if we move and add more white we're actually warming up this color because again we're moving away from the coldest blue that we can have and if we take this blue and we move more to adding um, white and black we're gonna warm it up as well so black can either cool or warm a color you can't say that it is always gonna cool or always going to warm because black does both so we're just warming it right up right now and I don't know if you can feel that temperature but to me this blue down here feels like ice and this black over here um, to me feels slightly warmer um, and if it doesn't feel warmer to you um, if you were my students at the university I would just say well you're wrong in a joking way <laughs> and we would all have a laugh um, or maybe that description of warm and cool doesn't work but either way um, you know you can say that you want to 
um, you're changing the color and you're moving away from black. Now another way again to warm up blue is to move into a different color family. So if we were at the saturated blue and we move in, just into this family right here and we stay saturated we can we can do it that way and just keep warming it up right and this will just warm it and then um, we can also let me just do a couple more here so that will warm all the way to orange um, but we can also take this blue right here and we can do subtle things like sometimes what I'll do is is I'll want to gray out a color but I want to warm it at the same time so I'll move and, and add a little black which is I call that graying it out and I'm losing my my pure blue in there so I'm just gonna paint that back in real quick but if but sometimes I'll want to warm it by adding black and um, a warmer hue. I think I said that already. So you're kind of graying it out, but you're warming it at the same time. Into different families. One thing that I think also is really um, interesting and really good to know is gray so um, to learn about gray so these you would say these are definitely gray colors in here and I think it's really important to know that um, like if you looked at this color you saw where I chose it from but if you looked at this color all by itself you would probably say well that's gray now that to me that's a warm gray okay and this is a warmer gray right here. Okay, slightly warmer. And this is a cooler gray right here. And this should just keep cooling out, you know. Um, so the type of gray that you use in your painting really matters based on the color choices that you are already making. So you can't just you don't want to just introduce a gray without having a, a reason and I know that this is this is really super subtle what's happening here um, but you can kind of see the color transition that this gray is making I, I can I have to tell you that when I first started um, working with Photoshop understanding and learning how this palette works actually made my color better it was it, it has been eye-opening because I didn't understand grays as well as I do now and where they fit in. Um, so if we go back to, let's go back to our face again. Whoops. Okay. There are a lot of gray colors. Now when I painted this, this little face right here, I did not choose very many gray colors at all but you'll find that there are a lot of colors that are what I would call kind of grayed out a little bit so if I look in here there's a lot of black added to that I never chose to paint with colors like this what I did choose was to paint with more saturated colors but when they neutralize when they mix they form those grays so I'll give you an example so I would choose whoops I would choose a color like that maybe I would paint you know in an area like like right here I put some of that color in there okay so I'm just gonna put that color down right here so I might paint with 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 some of that okay but then I'm choosing cooler colors so I'm choosing some greens to paint with but maybe I'm I'm choosing softer greens maybe over in here mint type greens but when those colors mix you know then what do you get you know and let's pick some of those and see what happens see we get these middle tones so I can I can color pick through my whole face here and find colors that I never chose in the color picker they they they, they got there because of one color laying over top of another a nice 
cool or a nice saturated color against another one mixing is going to form those neutralized colors. And when I say neutralized, I basically mean, um, you know, like if you take an acid and a base and you mix them together, your strong acid becomes somewhere in the middle and your strong base becomes somewhere in the middle. Um, and that's what's happening right here is that it's pu pulling these colors right in the middle. Um, and anyway, I, I hope that helps a little bit. Just, uh, you know, I didn't want to take too long to, to explain this kind of a thing. It's um, something that if you play around with it, um, it you know, I think you, you can learn a lot just by getting into Photoshop and, and actually taking other people's photos in there or taking your own photos in there and just, just selecting around and seeing where colors are coming from. One of the ways that I got my the, some color harmony in this piece was to repeat some of these purples um, up here. And I, re and I came up with these purples because I'm actually using some of those purples in the skin tones. And so they're a little bit more saturated out here. But the neat thing is when you repeat them, it gives you more of a color harmony throughout the whole piece. Well, thanks for watching. Again, you can uh, visit my YouTube channel. If you look right below here, um, you can click on my name and go there. Or you can go out to my blog at willterry.blogspot.com. And I uh, hope to see you over there on my channel or on my blog. Talk to you later. Bye.